Hi, this is the Raspberry Pi 400. It's essentially a Raspberry Pi 4 with a membrane keyboard in a nice little case. I use it in the lab as a simple computer for looking up data sheets and playing music from Shoutcast servers. When I bought this thing, I couldn't help but wish that I could take this with me to play emulators, DOS games, or use it for ham radio stuff. But that would mean also carrying around a power bank or USB-C power supply and more importantly a screen. This is the NEC PC8201A. It features a large keyboard that's quite comfortable to type on. A small company called Clockwork Pi has created what's essentially a Raspberry Pi powered version of this. Their dev term uses the same form factor, albeit shrunk down. I love that idea, but the keys are too close to each other and they are too small for comfortable typing, while the whole device is quite bulky and made of plastic. So, Clockwork made this. This is the U console. It's an open source, open hardware, battery powered handheld computing device. It's made from machined aluminum and held together by a single type of screw. Just like the dev term, it comes as a kit that is easy to put together. I'm not gonna go over the assembly in this video, there's plenty of content out there showing how this is put together. Clockwork calls this a fantasy console, but I feel they missed a marketing opportunity here. This is an off-the-shelf cyberdeck. As with the dev term, you can get a variety of single board computers with this. In addition to the Raspberry CM4, there's also the A04 with a quad-core A53 and 2 gigs of RAM, the A06 with two A72 cores and four A53 cores and 4 gigs of RAM, and a low-power single-core RV64 RISC processor with 1 gig of RAM. You can get the CM4 version with or without the Raspi CM4 included. If you want to source the CM4 yourself, don't make the mistake I did and get a CM4 with integrated eMMC storage, since that will disable your SD card slot. And even though the A06 is faster than a CM4, I would still recommend the CM4 because long-term software support for the A06 is questionable. I would not want to type long texts on this. For shell commands, editing files, game input and such is perfectly fine and thumb-friendly. But the keyboard arrangement is a little bit unusual, both in special key placement as well as thanks to the top letter row, which is shifted to the right to make space for the tab button. On the plus side, the keyboard is backlit with two brightness levels. The battery lasts about four hours, though I did manage seven hours with the screen brightness turned down and doing some less demanding tasks. Unfortunately, the stock charging speed over USB-C is very slow. I measured 500 milliamps. However, searching in the Clockwork forum and Discord reveals that there is a simple one-line command that you can type in to increase the charge speed significantly. With the setting recommended in the forums, charging from 43% to 75% took 25 minutes. I don't know why this isn't set by default in the supplied OS image, but I'm glad it's something the user can change. There is one minor issue with the battery percentage not being completely accurate. Some tools will show 100% state of charge, when in actuality the battery is at 90. That's because there is a hard-coded capacity value in the battery controller's driver source. The community has already fixed this for the A06, and since the driver is identical, it should only be a matter of time until you can get a pre-made kernel for the CM4 with that fix. A more severe problem I ran into is bad Wi-Fi reception. While there is a stick-on external antenna included in the kit, it doesn't really help much. And yes, I did enable the external antenna in the CM4's boot config file. People on the Clockwork forums have posted pictures of their own antenna mods, and I eventually broke down and 3D printed one that I felt was the least visually disturbing addition to the smooth metal lines. At least, if you get a short antenna, it tucks neatly inside instead of sticking out. The screen is nice and bright. It's a little reflective, but it's not too bad. The viewing angles are good, but they're not the best I've ever seen. The aspect ratio is much more sensible than on the dev term, and the resolution is adequate. Still, text can get quite small. The two speakers are both on the right side of the device and they get decently loud, but they lack any sort of bass. They get the job done though. Mm, I'm thirsty. 
As for ports, you get a USB-A port, one USB-C port, micro HDMI, and one 3.5mm headphone and microphone combo jack. Clockwork provides their own OS image, which is currently one version behind the official Raspberry OS. Unfortunately, it's not just a matter of writing a different OS image onto a micro SD card and plopping it in. The screen and keyboard use a custom compiled kernel, and although Clockwork do provide the patches on GitHub, this is not for the faint of heart. If you plan to upgrade to Debian Bookworm, for example, you have to apply kernel patches and manually merge some of the conflicts in the kernel source code. But do you really need to be on the bleeding edge? I personally think that for a device like this, always having the latest Linux kernel isn't that important. That said, I do hope that we'll see native support in future versions of Raspbian and other distros, and there is work on the way to automate this process in the future, like this kernel patcher by Renze Nikolai, which isn't finished just yet. The good news is that in the OS image provided by Clockwork, everything works. Wi-Fi, audio, the special keys like brightness control, keyboard, backlight and volume control, they're all functional. On the software side, Clockwork ships their image with a selection of games and several emulators. Most interestingly for me, both DOSBox and DOSBox staging are pre-installed. It's still just a Raspberry Pi 4, but one that you can actually take with you and that has a full keyboard, so that should make it the perfect machine for classic DOS games. There's plenty of other videos showing Game Boy, SNES and similar console emulation, so I won't bother with that here. Most DOS games work just great. DOSBox staging has fantastic emulation for the Sound Blaster, Gravis Ultrasound and even the Roland MT32. Classics such as Day of the Tentacle, Sam and Max, Doom, Heretic, TFX, Jazz Jackrabbit, they all look and sound exactly as they should. Some titles run relatively slow, like Dark Forces here, and some are downright unplayable, like Duke Nukem 3D. Well, these games are best played using native ports instead of the DOSBox emulation. Another use case for the U console is ham radio. You can lock your radio contacts, run WSJTX, JTDX and JS8 call, and use it as a terminal for digital modes. You can use Grid Tracker to visualize your contacts on a map, or you could just run MMSSTV to transmit and receive images over shortwave radio. If you have a portable rig like the Xygu X6100, then all you need is a single USB cable between the radio and the U console. You can also use it as a portable pen testing tool and run things like Angry Oxide to check how secure your wireless network is because we all know you'll only do this to your own Wi-Fi, right? You'll probably want to run Hashcat on a beefier machine though. Note that you need a USB Wi-Fi dongle that supports monitor mode for many Wi-Fi pen testing tools because the chip on the CM4 doesn't support that. The U console CM4 version without the compute module is $120. You can get a complete kit with CM4 included for $190. There's shipping and possibly also customs fees on top, and there is also quite a long lead time until orders are manufactured and delivered. The CM5 is right around the corner, but there is no official word on an adapter board yet. I do hope that Clockwork will offer this in the future. It should be possible. After all, they went from the CM3 to the CM4 using a new adapter board. All the hardware is open and the schematics are available, meaning that anyone could design add-on or replacement boards down the road. Though, curiously, the PCB files are currently missing on GitHub. There are already several third-party add-on cards like the UPICA board, which adds an RP2040 and a side-facing I.O. connector, or the UHub, which gives you three additional USB-C ports. These boards slot in where the 4G module would go, so you can't combine multiple modules. 
That said, I don't want to recommend something on the mere possibility of future improvements. Let's face it, you can get a used laptop with more power for the same price. And for console emulation gaming, you can get a handheld emulation device that has better buttons, better D-pad and costs half the price of a new console with the CM4. At the end of the day, this is not the most practical handheld computing device out there. But it also looks way more interesting than a cheap old laptop and it is much more solid than what you can typically get at that price point. Even with the limited processing power of the CM4, it is still a really good portable DOS emulation device and a great companion for mobile ham radio operations. And these are just the things I use it for. I'm curious to see what Clockwork will think of next. Perhaps something portable but with a true mechanical keyboard? For now, I'm happy that there is a company that makes an all-metal open-source cyberdeck that is actually useful. <laughs>